Hello everyone. Um, so my name is Miss Kent um, and I work at the Embrook School. Um, and I am here to give you a masterclass. And my masterclass um, is going to be a little bit about Buddhism, um, but mostly about drawing beautiful mandalas like the one that you can see um, on the screen behind me. Um, so we're gonna start with a little bit of information about Buddhism, which is something that I find absolutely fascinating. Um, and then we will move on to thinking about whether or not um, we could draw one of the things that we can see in the background. Um, so, we're going to start um, by thinking about what is Buddhism. So I'm sure lots of you um, have um, studied Buddhism or at least heard of Buddhism, um, either at school or at home or, you know, maybe on the television um, or in newspapers or something like that. Um, so Buddhism uh, is, is a religion, kind of, I would say it's a bit more of a philosophy, more of a way of life, and it definitely does affect the way people live their lives. Um, so Buddhism was created about two and a half thousand years ago um, when a gentleman called Siddhartha Gautama was born um, and he comes to be known as the Buddha. Um, so he was kind of the person that created all of the teachings about Buddhism and some of those we're going to be looking at today. Now, one of my favorite stories that the Buddha taught um, was called the parable, which is like a story with a meaning. Um, so the parable of the poisoned arrow. So the story goes a little bit like this. So you have to imagine yourself um, in a forest, okay? So there's this person in a forest um, and he has been shot by a poisoned arrow. Um, so he is not very well at all. He's kind of on the floor, he's really suffering, he's in lots and lots of pain. Um, and obviously he's kind of thinking to himself, he's got lots of questions going through his mind, etc. cetera. Um, so he starts asking all of these questions, um, but he kind of ends up asking all these ridiculous questions. He's kind of like, oh, um, who shot the arrow? Uh, I want to know who shot the arrow, who shot me and poisoned me? Um, and then he asks, you know, what kind of arrow shot me? Um, how was the arrowhead made? Um, what was the arrowhead made out of? Um, what kind of, you know, chariots were the army using when they shot the arrow? Were they riding white horses um, when, they, when they kind of shot the arrow? Um, now, Siddhartha Gautama teaches this story, so the Buddha tells us this story, to remind us that actually all of those questions are pretty much completely pointless, aren't they? If I'm currently on the floor being shot um, by uh, a poisoned arrow that the poison is eventually going to kill me, I don't need to know what kind of arrow it is. Um, I don't need to know um, what kind of horse the person was riding or what kind of chariot um, they were on, what trajectory um, the arrow was taking. Um, so he says, the questions this person should be asking are things like, is there a doctor around? Um, does that doctor have an antidote? Um, does an antidote for this poison exist? Um, is there anything I can be doing right now to stop the suffering that I'm going through? Um, things like that. But actually, there's even questions um, that are still, they, they seem really good, um, but they might not be good, as good as we think. Um, so is there any chance of success um, of me surviving this poisoned arrow might seem like a good question, but actually it's not really a good question because I can't do anything about the future. The best question to ask would be that one about, is there an antidote? So you might think to yourself, what was the point in that story? Um, so the point in me telling you the story of the poisoned arrow is that just like the person in the story soon realizes um, that the only questions that matter are the ones that really affect his life, that's exactly what Buddhism is trying to do. So Buddhism as a religion doesn't really care about all the things that, you know, we can't prove. It doesn't ask the question, um, you know, why was the world created? Because we may never have an answer to that. And actually me knowing why the world was created isn't necessarily going to make my life any better. So Buddhism aims to answer those questions that are really necessary to making our lives better. Um, and one of those, the main one, kind of linked to the story of the poisoned arrow, is how can we stop suffering? How can we, you know, make our lives happier, more pleasant, um, just generally have kind of a, a better and more promising life? Um, so that is where I'm going to link you in um, to the next thing that comes up. So we're going to think about one of the main teachings of Buddhism. There's actually three of them. They're called the three marks of existence, but we're just going to look at one of them today. And that one is called Anicca. Um, so 
this is um, how you spell Anitya in my beautiful thing here. Um, so Anitya is a Sanskrit word, um, which is a language from India that is no longer spoken. But Anitya means impermanence. Um, so it's this idea um, that, as you can see on my, my poster, that everything changes, okay? So nothing stays the same. Um, things are changing constantly every minute of the day everything comes to an end, um, but equally that has the most positive outlook as well. Just because everything ends, it also means that there are constant new beginnings, there are constant new chances um, to do new things, um, and actually it also means that even all of the bad things that happen in life will also come to an end. So even though it does say that, you know, good things come to an end, that's not a bad thing, because it means that we've got new things to look forward to. And it also means that the bad things that we aren't necessarily enjoying will also end one day. So that is how um, this whole masterclass links into this idea of mandalas, um, which you can see um, on the screen up here. Um, so mandalas kind of encompass this idea of impermanence and this idea that even the most beautiful things in life, such as these mandalas behind me, don't last forever and that's okay because actually we can enjoy them whilst we have them and if we don't get too attached to them or too attached to anything then we won't be so sad when they are no longer the same or once they they disappear okay so this behind me is a sand mandala and this was created by monks in thailand and they create these mandalas with hours and hours of work. This one took over 500 hours of work um, from a set of monks. So probably about five or six monks um, over kind of many, many weeks. So we're talking hundreds of hours of work. And they pick each grain of sand individually um, with a pair of tweezers and then put them down individually to create these amazing patterns that we see before us. They're all kind of perfectly symmetrical in their shapes um, and then obviously they're coloured with the sand um, to look even more beautiful. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what they do. They spend forever doing these amazing things, making them look beautiful. It's also kind of a type of meditation because whilst they're creating um, these beautiful masterpieces, they're not really thinking of anything else. They're very much just living in the moment and enjoying what they're doing. But at the end, they do kind of the most astonishing thing. Um, so once they've spent these hundreds of hours creating these beautiful masterpieces, they just destroy them. So they'll be beautifully laid out with the sand kind of in the perfect positions. And then after they've created them, often they won't even take pictures because a picture is almost against the point. Because if you take a picture of a mandala, then actually that's a little longer lasting. Um, when the point of the mandala is for it to be destroyed in the end because it shows that nothing lasts forever and that we should not become too attached to things because that will just make us sad in the future because we can't stop things changing. But actually, even the photograph that we take of the mandala won't last forever. We might think, think that things that go on the internet or things that kind of, you know, end up on our phone might last kind of in eternity. But they won't. There'll be a time in the future when these things don't exist, you know, when the world is so different than we can think about it today that they just won't be here anymore. But the point is to enjoy things as we have them and not hold on to them too much. So the plan for the next couple of minutes is for me to show you how to draw one of these beautiful mandalas. Um, and hopefully if you draw one, colour it in, make it look all beautiful. But that means at the end you will have to be willing to scrumple it up um, and chuck it away because that's exactly what mandalas are all about so it's not about making it beautiful and putting it on your wall maybe you could do that for a little bit but you have to be prepared at the end to get rid of it because that's the point nothing lasts forever we can enjoy it whilst we have it but we shouldn't hold on to it for too long Okay, so this is me drawing my mandala um, in the background there. Um, so as you can see at the beginning, I folded my paper in half and half again, and then I did the same diagonally. Now, you have to start with something in the middle. Um, so I started um, with my symbol in the middle, um, which is fine, the yin and yang symbol, but you could start with a flower, or you could just start with a circle, anything at all. Um, then the aim um, is to make it symmetrical, 
mine isn't symmetrical, it never ends up being perfectly symmetrical, which is fine. Um, but as you can see, I aim to make everything kind of fit in one of those eight segments I've made. So lots of my points end up on the lines that I folded to start with. Um, and then lots of the circles go from line to line, um, sorry, the semi-circles. Um, I've used loads of different colours because I am a very colourful person, I like lots and lots of different colours. Um, and yeah, I just draw lots of different symbols. So mine is mostly um, made up of kind of semi-circles, um, kind of, you know, um, I suppose you'd call them like paisley shapes, so little like towers that have um, like points at the top. Um, but essentially, you can choose whatever you want to do as you go around, as long as it's kind of vaguely symmetrical. Now, the thing I like most about these is that they are never perfect, or at least mine aren't. You can see that I'm drawing at the moment are kind of an upside down paisley shape. All of those are completely different, um, and that's fine. Some of them are smaller than others, some of them are bigger than others, um, some reach a different height, um, and none of that really matters. As long as kind of you have enjoyed doing it, um, that's all that really, really matters. Um, now, the point of mandalas, as I was saying in the, in the kind of previous section about talking about Buddhism, um, is that it's kind of like a meditation. Now, Buddhism preaches that not even preacher just tells us um, that we should live in the moment and that we shouldn't be caring too much about the future because I can't affect necessarily, well, I don't know what's going to happen in the future, so I shouldn't worry um, about the future. I shouldn't be living in the past because I definitely can't affect the past. Um, I can't affect what's happened there. Um, and the only moment that I can really affect is the present moment. And therefore, if the present is so special, that's where we should keep our mind. We should keep our mind in the present. And that's what drawing mandalas is supposed to do. Um, it's supposed to keep us kind of focused on the present and enjoying the moment that we are in because that's all we are focusing on, okay? So as I said, you can use kind of any colors. Um, you can just do it in pencil. Lots of people do them in black and white. Um, yeah, it's completely your choice. I really enjoy doing them super bright and colourful, uh, but that's obviously not everybody's preference. Um, I quite like the end because you always run out of space, so it never quite ends up being perfect and symmetrical. Uh, I couldn't fit my middle um, ones on here, um, so that was quite nice that it ended up like that. So this is me almost finished. I'm just going to add a little bit more. So I've got a little bit of purple to come, I think. And then a little bit of pink. And then you'll see what we're supposed to do with them at the end. Because the point is that nothing lasts forever. So there we are. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed um, the Buddhism Mandala Masterclass. Um, and I hope you get to make your own mandala. Um, and here's mine, uh, just to prove it's still all screwed up. Um, so I really look forward um, to seeing some mandalas that you produce uh, and that you enjoy making them and that you enjoy being in the moment um, and kind of, you know, um, creating something that you just created because you enjoyed doing it, not necessarily for any other purpose, but just because you enjoyed it. And I also look forward to seeing you throw it all away and just forget about it and move on to the next wonderful thing um, that you get to do. Have a wonderful day. See you soon.